morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph. Uh, we're getting uh, started this week with a new president as well as some new uh, executive orders putting into place. Uh, a couple things also happening around it, uh, the city of Missoula, Montana in general. But let's like let's just dive right into it as we start our morning show, Wake Up Missoula. Uh, <laughs> Wednesday, as always, uh, as uh, as I was saying, was a big day for President Joe Biden. Took office under the tumultuous, tumultuous couple of months of stop the steal and win at all costs attitude from former President Trump, who gained popularity as the outsider who would drain the swamp. Another term coined coined by the former. Without getting into it, we'll expect to see similar values from the administration as we did with Barack Obama, since many of the appointed cabinet members are from Obama's original cabinet. Um, day one uh, focused on overturning many executive orders from Trump, which included the uh, AKA Muslim travel ban uh, and pathways for children born to immigrants, which uh, for uh, citizenship in the United States, which in many cases the United States still has a lot of restrictions when it comes to gaining citizenship, and they might... And uh, I heard somewhere that it would take about eight years for a lot of these kids born to immigrants who came over to gain full citizenship. Day two, of which would be Thursday, uh, focused on coronavirus and trying to get this bill and trying to work with the House. Nancy Pelosi even said that they are going to hit the ground running with this uh, the first day of the new administration and new House, new Senate, and new everything. Uh, so this is going to be a $1.6 trillion deal. Um, a lot of the money is going to be going towards uh, over 100 million vaccines that are going to be distributed throughout the United States to uh, help push this forward as well as uh, the $1,400 stimulus check. Um, Dr. Dr. Anthony Fauci announced Thursday that he's honored to be welcomed back into the World Health Organization when Trump's administration pulled out because he claimed who was unable to handle the coronavirus from spreading to the U.S. from China. COVID-19 deaths total 408,000 people in the United States, making it one-fifth of the world's uh, death, um, which has totaled 2 million people. Coronavirus has uh, affected 96.2 million confirmed cases in the world as of Thursday. Um, and back to uh, some of the issues that some people were worried about violence erupting um, on Inauguration Day. Uh, Helena, one of the state capitals of the 50 state capitals that people were concerned about, FBI warned that there could have been some more resurgence of violence. But it was, uh, uh, was a lone protester. Uh, was in, was stood in front of the Capitol building uh, in Helena on Inauguration Day, but it wasn't someone from the Stop in Stop the Steal groups, but a lone man named John Vore, whose sign read "Biden won, Trump lost, let's move on." Uh, FBI did warn of potential violence in all 50 states' capitals on Inauguration Day, but after reports expected more news to happen, uh, business as usual for our state capital in Helena. Helena's Independent Record reported for more details on this. Uh, Monday was Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and in Missoula uh, has been a tradition since night. Uh, and of course, uh, in Montana, uh, in the video, you will learn that Montana has been uh, uh, recognizing Martin Luther King Day uh, since um, 1992, which it was originally Heritage Day on that day as well. Just a little bit of history. Uh, last couple of years, uh, the Martin Luther King Day Jr. will would uh, kick off at Karis Park around 5 p.m. and then they would move on to St. Anthony Parish Church where many speakers from many different walks from the community talk, pray, and sing about togetherness. Uh, this year, they live streamed the event from the YouTube channel Empower Montana, which has been advocating for LGBT and BIPOC communities in Montana. The biggest change this year was to engage in Missoula's new program, LEARN, which will help understand the struggles of our Black, Indigenous, and people of color, the BIPOC community. Um, I'll have the video uh, later on at the end of my show. But uh, since I don't have city council for you guys, uh, city council didn't meet on Monday. They did have a land use and planning on Wednesday, which was very short, and they uh, it was more of an, uh, basically giving somebody a job. In within the uh, land use and planning committee, so that was kind of uh, lackluster in terms of me uh, talking about the city council. But they will be talking a lot more next week, so I'll have more information on that as we go along. But as I always say, if you want more information about the city of Missoula, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. I'll leave it right on for you as I transition to Cindy Farr from the city county health department. Hi, my name is Cindy Farr and I'm the Incident Commander for the Missoula City County Health Department's COVID-19 response 
Today is Thursday, January 21st, and this is our COVID briefing. We've now had 7,371 cumulative positive cases of COVID-19 in Missoula County to date with 47 new cases since yesterday. We've had 60 deaths associated with COVID-19, and currently we have eight Missoula County residents and seven non-county residents hospitalized in Missoula County. We now have 3,008 active COVID-19 cases. Those active cases and their identified close contacts do remain in isolation and quarantine and are being supported as needed. Our current average incidence per 100,000 people is 37. And just a reminder, we really wanna see that number get down to 25. All of these numbers, as well as the graphs and figures associated are found on our website at MissoulaInfo.com. The state of Montana is reporting 90,649 cumulative COVID cases, which is up 408 new cases since yesterday. There are now 4,841 active cases with 137 active hospitalizations across the state. And there have been 1,100 deaths related to COVID-19 statewide. The University of Montana has had 533 cumulative UM associated cases since the beginning of fall semester with three new cases reported since yesterday and there are currently 17 active UM associated cases. First, I just wanna talk for a moment about case investigation and contact tracing. When we saw our last spike in cases in October, we were having difficulty keeping up with case investigation and contact tracing. At that time, we moved to a new system called Sarah Alert. Sarah Alert is a web-based system that was specifically designed to assist health departments to do rapid case investigation and contact tracing specifically for COVID-19. Since changing over to that system and adding some additional staff, we are able to continue to complete case investigation within 24 hours of receiving notification of a new case. And in most cases, we're able to complete contact tracing within 36 hours. So we've definitely seen an improvement there. Um, it is really important that you l take a listen to your voicemail and answer your phone um, if you're getting phone calls from a 258 number, 880. Um, we've got people that are using their cell phones. So definitely try and catch those calls so that we can get through that process quickly. Next, I wanna talk about the COVID-19 vaccine. There is still limited vaccine availability in Montana and in Missoula County. While we have been able to get weekly shipments of the vaccine into our county, the amount of vaccine that we are able to receive is really dictated by the amount of vaccine allocated to the state as a whole. Right now, Montana is only able to receive 13,525 doses of vaccine per week to be distributed throughout the state. Missoula County, and this includes all providers in the county as a whole, is only able to receive a a total of approximately 1,500 doses of vaccine per week. So while we know that everyone is anxious to get vaccinated, it's going to take some time for us to get the vaccine widely distributed due to the limited amount of vaccine that we're actually able to receive. And we do not know when our allocation may be increased, but we will keep you posted as we continue to move forward. At the health department, we are working to finalize a lease agreement with Southgate Mall to utilize the Old Lucky's market space for vaccinations. We hope to have that clinic up and running in the next week or week and a half. Um, in the meantime, we continue working with our community partners to move into vaccinations for those who fit into the 1B category. As we move through these phases, I just want to remind you that if you were in a previous phase, like if you were a healthcare provider that was unable to get in during 1A, um, to get vaccinated, you'll still be able to get a vaccination appointment in that next phase. The current estimate for the number of people who fit into phase 1B in Missoula County is approximately 39,000 people. The Emergency Operations Center has stood up their type three incident management team to help get the information out to the public about where and how to sign up for vaccination appointments. They will be posting that information at covid19.missoula.co we will also have a link to that website on our website at MissoulaInfo.com. Last, I just want to remind everybody that we are still seeing the spread of COVID-19 in our communities. So if you are experiencing any symptoms, please call 258-INFO to schedule an appointment through our drive through testing facility on Flynn Lane. And that's it for my daily briefing today. As always, you can um, subscribe to us on YouTube under my name, Cindy Farr, that's C-I-N-D-Y-F-A-R-R. -R. 
click that notification bell so that you get notified when additional videos are uploaded. Um, you can follow us on Facebook at the Missoula City County Health Department's Facebook page. You can check out MissoulaInfo.com for um, all of the most recent information about vaccinations at the health department, as well as um, basic vaccine information, um, frequently asked questions, and all of our data and our numbers that I just reported here are also found on that website. Um, so check that out. And um, again, call 258-INFO if you have any questions or if you would like to schedule an appointment for a test through our drive through clinic. And that is it for today. So until Tuesday, everybody stay healthy. Hey, movies are coming out this week. Uh, regardless of what you may have heard, um, there's a new movie called Our Friend. Oh, so this is what happened to Jason Segel. He's doing some kind of indie circuit or whatever, dramas, whatever. This movie is based on a true story. So, well, time to start drinking again. It's been a, it's been a good six years, but, you know, based on a true story is something that just kills me every single time I see it. But Jason Segel is in this movie, so I don't know what else is happening. But, uh, okay, someone get cancer, someone gets cancer, and the friend, hence the term our friend in the title, uh, Jason Siegel comes down to make things better. Or you can skip it. Um, not sure what this is actually happens, but you know, since it's a true story, uh, Hollywood would take the liberty of doing whatever they want with this film. Um, but think about it in terms of most of these movies like Falling Our Stars, um, all these uh, movies that talk about cancer, where it's very much like they they want it to be super dramatic so there could be a potential Oscar. So in a lot of ways, it's kind of selfish. I don't want to get into it any more than I have to, but uh, this is pre-critic and I'm pre-judging this based on absolutely nothing. Uh, but it kind of seems like a lot of these movies are just like, everything's perfect until it's not. But only through the power of love can we learn to uh, cope, move on, accept it, love, words, buzzwords, and all that stuff. I'm pretty sure that um, the movie is something to do with somebody who has, who's terminally ill, um, everything was fine, and then it's terminally ill, things get worse, and then their friend shows up and makes things better, but controversially, um, things happen, blah, blah, blah. I'm not, so basically I'm not allowed to hate this movie, uh, but also I don't have to watch it, so I can't get in trouble for something I didn't do. This next movie is uh, kind of like a hurrah into uh, kind of like cosmic horror, uh, super bloody uh, violence, but more towards the kids. It's called PG, uh, Psycho Goreman. Uh, now this is a movie that takes H.P. Lovecraft and brings it to a family fun gore entertainment. Imagine you have ultimate power to destroy the universe, but it's controlled by a little girl who's just like, I want him to do my chores. And then that's my little girl impression. Um, so she does the, the movie probably starts out like any uh, kid troublemaking film that has them abuse the power only to get in way over the heads, followed by a lesson learned and the monster gaining some form of humanity and saying that he was meant to destroy. Sound familiar? Uh, I just saved you a visit to a random streaming service to watch this film. Uh, this next one is a... Uh, a video game, and this is a part of a video game franchise called the Hitman series. This is Hitman 3. Basically, the whole point of this uh, video game is you're a hitman and you kill people. There, done. That's it. Nothing special. But let's part of this. But let's dive into it a little bit deeper. I have no idea what this game's about. I've never played it. I have an, a basic understanding of what it's all about. Where apparently you dress up, uh, you, slight variations of your costume, and people are just like. Okay, I, I, I know that guy. He's he's part of our security detail, even though I know everybody's face. But since he's wearing the uniform, he must be cool. And then he wanders around and kills people. Uh, that's part of the game. Um, man, video games are really turning people into sociopathic murderers. But uh, something about Super Clone Baby Geniuses 3 or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Notes, notes, notes. Must turn off the ones that created him. Oh, must turn on. The ones that created, I don't know why, autocorrect changed on to off. Um, so he has to fight for himself and not the ideals of the shadow organization that hired him. And he works for another shadow organization, evil corporation, something about money and intrigue, and maybe he learns to do the right thing in the end. But, you know, maybe because it's a new game, um, it might you might get a choice in the gender of the character because that seems to be a... Uh, awoke new things with video games. Um, anyways, Bang Bang or Hush Hush Stab Stab. Game depends on your fighting preferences, but always ends in you escaping or maybe dying in the end, question mark. 
So there's the g movies and games coming out this weekend as well. I have a new dubbing stuff for you guys. I got a pu I got a comment about uh, somebody wanting me to do Tarzan the Fearless. So we're gonna dive right in to Tarzan the Fearless. Hope no one saw this. Graceful landing. I'm hurt. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Legs asleep. Ooh. A leg asleep. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Wake up, legs. Ooh. Ooh. I knew I'd save a pretty lady someday. Come on now. I'm your hero. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Come on, come on, wake up. I wonder if saving her makes her entitled to me. Hmm, let's find out. Oh, whoa. Oh, what happened? You are really tall. Uh, -huh. uh I'm Tarzan, and that is a bunch of wind and stuff happening out there. I like erasing whiteboards. <laughs> um, well, thanks for getting me out of that situation. <laughs> uh, What's your deal? Like, uh, uh you come over on? here often? Wait a minute. <laughs> He's handsomer than me. Do you need me to carry you? Well, no, but <laughs> you can do it anyways. Uh, uh, so I was telling my boyfriend, oh, I'm sorry, my ex-boyfriend, uh, that I don't think... No, get away no, from No, stop her, it! He, he's really good looking! <laughs> Really? So what's your deal? No shirt? Uh, this is the guy who saved my life, right? Your name is Tarzan? You, um, saved my life mm -hmm. and now we're mm -hmm. going to get married and whatever? Mm -hmm. Um, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh... Here you go. A gift. I think I'm in over my head. <laughs> is this how you work it? Oh, jeez. Why'd I wake up in Margaritaville? Ugh, wait a minute. Ugh, oh, what he said. What? Ugh. Oh. oh, here's my book of poetry. Ha <laughs> Uh, hey. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm just looking at all my unfinished poetry. Hmm. I can't wait to hear all about it. But I think that's the least of our worries. Well, if anything were to happen to me, I'd have this book... Well, I don't plan on dying. All right, let's Ooh, just get Tarzan's this wood scared. out of the way. Yeah. Well, um, uh, Tarzan, go. What just the heck is going on in here? -y? Oh, hey, blonde Jane. I wrote poetry for all sorts of uh, things that we could. Uh... Huh? A lot of the poetry's for you, you know. I hope you like it. It's a book, a poetry, unfinished, but you know, it's a work in progress. Well, it seems you're well aware of my character arc. Well, there you go. I mean, that's... <laughs> Boom, that's about does it for basically my morning show. Uh, for more information, go to MCAT.org. Um, you can call us at 542-6228. We are in the process of, you know, getting the library up and going. There's a couple things here and there that uh, uh, there's not too much I can actually uh, um, talk about because I don't know much what's going on. Uh, all I know is that the library has been meeting weekly. Mm, sorry, a little burp there, but the library has been meeting uh, weekly to discuss the plans on moving forward and what's going to happen. Um, I heard a couple things here and there about where uh, some vaccines in the, the city of Missoula is going to be taking place. I heard that they're going to do a community vaccine site at Lucky's Market. Um, so that's one of the th one of the places that people can go, but not right now because I don't know what uh, stage we're in. Not to mention we have a whole new administration on the uh, federal level, uh, President Biden. So uh, we don't know exactly uh, what the 
uh, how uh, Operation Warp Speed, which is the uh, coronavirus uh, vaccine distribution um, plan is called, is how it's going to evolve based on uh, Joe Biden's plan to move forward on this. All right. <sighs> Any more Missoula news that's kind of happening around? Not too much. I, like, I, like I said before, I was going to show you guys a video for Martin Luther King Jr. Day, so I'm going to wrap up my show. But right after my show, you're going to be able to see just a, a nice... Uh, edited down version of the Martin Luther King Jr. Day uh, sponsored by Empower Montana and many other organizations uh, that ha uh, have been part of this Missoula tradition for many years. And so without further ado, uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. to all of you for participating, for uh, standing up, for making good trouble. Um, I, I believe in good trouble and, uh, and I hope to continue my work with you to make our place as part of this greater place much better for everyone. Like this event tonight, a committee of volunteers, Missoula citizens just like you, plan and carry out events with speakers, music, and the beautiful art and essays submitted by area public school students. The large number of people who come together for this event sends a message to others in Montana and beyond that our community believes in the importance of equal rights. In Montana, the holiday was not recognized until 1992. Recognition was due in great part to the efforts of University of Montana professor of history, Dr. Harry Fritz, who was also a state uh, legislator as well too. Uh, prior to its passage, the bill faced an uphill battle in the Montana State Legislature. Articles in both the LA Times and the Chicago Tribune shine light onto Montana as one of three states at the time which did not support adopting the holiday. An ad hoc legislative committee was created and came up with several alternative proposals to the King holiday. One bill would establish an annual King Day on the third Monday in January and would eliminate a floating holiday, something that was called Heritage Day, which was at the time celebrated in different ways in various parts of the state. One, two, three. Oh,
comfort for change Did you exchange A walk on part in the war For a lead role in the cage The story is told of a little white girl uh, she was in first grade who in her first day of school on her first day of school went to a newly integrated school at the height of the segregation era anxious and nervous all day long her mother uh, was concerned about how her little girl how her daughter would do on this not only the first day of school but the first day at a newly integrated school when school was over, the little girl's mother met her daughter at their front door of their home when the little girl came home from school. And the little girl's mother asked her daughter, sweetie, how did everything go today? Oh, mother, you know what the little girl responded? A little black girl sat next to me. Expecting the worst, the mother of the little girl then asked calmly, and what happened? Little girl said, oh, mommy, we were both so scared. We just held hands all day long. While I share this story with you this evening, I acknowledge that we have come a very long way in terms of race relations. And while we may not be where we should be, I am thankful this evening that we are not where we used to be. But two different buildings. One says House of Hate, um, and the, the other one says Laundromat of Love, and you can see two paths leading to each one. Okay. any point someone could simply call the police on me and my life might end right then and there whether or not I had actually done anything wrong I could, one could also simply kill me and they might even get away with it with a slap on the wrist due to the fact that the that the trans panic defense is still alive and well in Montana I speak from a position of neurodivergence when I say that life has been an exhausting fight for survival, especially in the last year. I expect that at least one person listening to this feels similarly. I know that not having to fight anymore can be extremely tempting. I've thought about it myself before, and I've especially thought about it recently. I'm here to say that it's important to keep on fighting. Freedom, oh, freedom, freedom, oh, oh, freedom, yes, freedom, oh, freedom, please let my people go. Freedom, oh, freedom, freedom, oh, oh, freedom. 